girls you hear about, there's just infinite, you know, image, body image, body shaming, uh, so many things that they have to deal with. And it's just harder and harder as time goes on with social media and everything else. And to have a girl who's just strong, uh, strong-willed, intelligent, and knows what's, what's out there, gets what's out there, and understands what's coming back and can process it and sift through the garbage and know what's real and kind of what I should ignore and then just carry a positive demeanor and have a good self-image. And I just want her to grow up and just be strong and be positive and just be confident and know that she kicks butt and that's all that matters. and angle your body right here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open it and then you're gonna snap it like that. And so I'll do AB common marker. Mm -hmm. All right, both of them in. All right, That's the spot. <laughs> AB common mark. <laughs> AB common marker. Boom. Yeah! <laughs> A and B common marker. <laughs> So tell me, tell me about Ella from your perspective. What's she like? Take your time, man. If you've never met Ella, you don't know her, and you ask me to describe her to you in her life, in her spirit, who she is her martial arts, her training, her competition. The easiest way would probably be through Shakespeare. And that is to say, though she be but little, she is fierce. We met her through holding a charity event with Michelle Watterson, the Karate Hottie, UFC superstar. And we got a message on our Instagram. And it was like, ding! Like, hey, do you guys allow kids to train at these MMA seminars? We're like, yeah, sure, why not? So we're like, yeah, of course, let's do it. Like, bring her down. And all of a sudden, Ella shows up at the event and is throwing better than any adult in the room. There was something magical about her. And when she walked in the room, she was smiling and just this confident young lady. And I think the entire seminar, which was full of adults, were all watching her move and watching her get in and mix it up with full grown adults, you know? And she couldn't be more than 100 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> it was a spark. You always can see pure passion. You can always see that fire and instantly, Instantly, we knew that this was something that she loved. Even when she was watching Michelle instruct, people would be looking away, you know, talking. She was lasered in, laser focused in, and going through all the movements with just a smile on her face. And it was inspiring to see that fire and passion in such a young human. And you could tell this is something that she embodies and what she loves to do. I think it's two components essentially working together. Uh, I don't know the percentage or the split, but the first part would definitely just be Ella herself. Uh, nobody could have seen it coming, nobody knew it. The second she was introduced to martial arts, there was a switch, there was a light, there was this thing, and it was just undeniable. It was a connection, it was a partnership, it was these two elements, the martial arts and Ella, and they just seem to be together. It's as if she already knew it. She already had the passion for it. She already had an understanding for it. I grew up with martial arts as a hobby. I just, I always was passionate and loved it. Saw every single movie there was, even those cheesy 
you know, the foreign ones that came out with the bad dubbing and everything. So I always loved them. I uh, followed UFC right from UFC one. So I always had that kind of in the blood. And then you get this, this person, this little person in your life who one day goes out on a school outing uh, to a Taekwondo studio where they just have an experience day just to go out and try this thing. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I got a little ninja or something. You don't, you don't even, you don't know what to do with it. And you realize you got this passion, you got this person that might have something a little more and then you start exposing and start letting her loose. And now it's, I got this uncontrollable force of passion and martial arts fury that uh, I get choked and kicked and practiced on every day and I love every minute of it. My nickname is the Honey Badger. I like it because Honey Badgers are small but like feisty and they'll fight anyone. Uh, my name is Aaron Kapachowski, part owner and head coach of Kingdom MMA. I am Pinjani, or nicknamed PJ Wahanga. I'm primarily a boxing coach for most people here. My name is Julian Fisher. I'm a jiu-jitsu coach here at uh, Kingdom MMA. So Muay Thai comes from Thailand. It is the national sport over there. And it's a fairly all-encompassing stand-up martial art. Kicks, knees, punches, elbows, all fully allowed. Uh, grappling is also allowed. So kickboxing, boxing, uh, like Kyokushin contact karate, Kyokushin karate, they're all gonna stop when we're clinched up in grappling. And it doesn't stop in Muay Thai. I can throw you to the ground. I can catch a kick and throw you to the ground. We can clinch for a long time and still be striking each other. And that's kind of the difference between that and any other striking art, is it's until it goes to the ground, it's still like a fully fleshed out like combat sport. Most sports you're limited, especially striking sports, you're limited to striking with things that are padded, right? And Muay Thai was, before MMA, Muay Thai was the one where we're gonna hit with knees and bare shins and elbows. And if you watch the, like the golden age of Muay Thai in Thailand, they're not really punching with their padded gloves. And some of that mentality is, if I hit you with the padded glove, it's padded. I can use my knee, I can use my shin, I can use my elbow. So why hit you with something where I've got a pillow taped to it? Boxing is a martial art where you're limited to just your fists. So with just these, which are naturally easy to break and easy to injure, you start to learn how to A, figure out how certain techniques work, and more importantly, how easy it is to injure yourself so you have to take the time to actually figure out how things work from there. You'll start to realize, outside of just using this, there's a lot of things that work for your body, especially your legs, because most of the time when people think boxing is just arms, you still have to do a lot of work with your legs. You still got to do a lot of work with your cardio. It's a full body workout, it's just the attack tools are limited. So jiu-jitsu is a grappling martial art, so there's no striking, which is great because it really limits the amount of concussions that you get doing jiu-jitsu. On one hand, it allows you to defend yourself and control another person or a much larger person. At the same time, it's pretty safe. So you can control somebody, immobilize them without brutalizing them or really hurting them badly. So I think it's a it's a good way to deal with aggression, right? If, if it's your own aggression or somebody else's aggression. Martial arts, you willingly put yourself in uncomfortable situations. You choose to go and subject yourself to challenges. And when you get used to that, that is a lifelong asset that will pay dividends throughout your life. Uh, martial arts, I think, is, you hear it all the time, but it's true. Anybody who's in it at any level, and if you're serious, it's a spiritual journey of a, a lifestyle. During the day, I'll just do random things that are like, oh, randomly I'll just shadow box because I feel like it, or I'll do footwork just because I feel like it. The values contained within martial arts are a global principle. They are perseverance, they're getting through adversity, and most important, they're about finding yourself and understanding yourself and sharing the gift of what you have with the world. It's not a hobby, you're not playing hockey and then going home, and there are people who live and breathe hockey, and sometimes they reach, usually those are the people that reach greatness, but martial arts has taken her to 
a whole level of just discipline in life in every facet. You can see she's in control. I think we both recognized it in her because that same passion was in us. And we had our lives changed by martial arts. It set both of us on a, a, a trajectory that we would not be on if we had not been exposed to the lessons, the virtues, the principles that are contained in a martial arts lifestyle that have allowed us to excel. She manages situations, she can process situations, she maybe is more aware than a lot of other kids might be. Oh, that stranger's walking towards me, he's a little bit, something's weird. Schoolwork, hard, hard classes and people, oh, I can't do this and this is frustrating. During PE, I'm definitely like, you know, more fast, more strong. And in school, like, hmm. Sometimes if I'm struggling with something, I'll think of it as like I'm doing something in the gym. For me, it's easier to think of something like that. To her, it just becomes a 20 punch combo that, you know, I'll do this, I can get this and I'll learn this. Uh, and then just, I think in demeanor, to carry yourself, it's so hard. I mean, I can't, I can only imagine. So I think she carries that with her because of martial arts. Nothing else gives you that self-induced confidence. I mean, you can be arrogant, but arrogance isn't confidence and just knowing what you can do and what you can't do and having an intelligence that other people just can't carry. One of the common threads that we always hear is you know, the toughest battle is the one inside. You know, that to, to really overcome the challenges that we often create in our own minds. And so much of martial arts is mindset. What resonates so much with us and a big reason why we wanted to start Google Brothers is to make this available to more people. Put on an awareness campaign to say, hey, listen, there's some incredibly life-changing principles that are contained in martial arts. And if you're a parent, absolutely let them try it. And if the spark is lit, that can change the rest of their life. And not everybody is going to step into a ring. Not everybody wants to be the UFC world championship, but I'll tell you what, everybody is dealing with a fight every time they wake up in the morning. And the fight in the ring is the same as the fight internally. Putting your kids into martial arts and allowing them the ability to learn and to grow for themselves can't be touched. It's crazy to see things evolve. When we were martial artists starting off at Ella's age, you had two choices like karate, taekwondo, something simple. Now kids are learning a complete system from ground to stand up, like clinch fighting, all within the art. Not to mention too that boys, girls, all people train in it. It's a global event where everybody's connected. There is a giant, community that all speak the same language. I'll get angry at little things like school or stuff and then I'll take out my anger here because I'd rather do that than taking out my anger on something else. It's like a safe way to take out your anger. I started working and training with Ella about three years ago and it was at uh, Kingdom MMA. It was just by chance they just wanted to see how I was working with her. Just They did a couple of classes and then afterwards they asked me to do one-on-ones with her. Been working with her here and there since. I started coaching and training Ella about three years ago. Training with Ella is really fun. Everybody always makes a big deal that she's a kid. I, I sometimes forget. I talk to her the same as I do my other athletes. I try to approach the training the same as I do with the other athletes. You know, she, she does all the same routine. She does all the same drills. All the, like, the methodology is all the same as with like, my adult professionals. And then she'll skip away from me after pads. <laughs> and I have to remember like, oh yeah, this is a, this is still a kid having fun. And so it's fun, it's not, there's never a training session where she might not do well and it's like really serious and she's upset and now it's not a, now it's not a fun training session, now we're really into it. It's really serious and then immediately after it's really fun. There's never a bad day holding pads there, so that's nice. Working with Ella is very inspiring because she's very enthusiastic and she's very coachable. So I don't know if I've, if I've had a more coachable student, right? So that's the fun part of it. And then that inspires me. Part of it's the work ethic 
that's inspiring, but part of it is is the openness and the like the ease that she has with learning. I need to learn a lot of technique and how to use my whole body while punching. Because when I punch, I can't just use my shoulder. There's no power in that. You have to put in your legs, you have to put in your core, you have to twist your whole body to get the momentum to put power. I don't think I've tried to coach for something where she's said no or put up a wall or, you know, if I show her something, she'll do it. And I know that it's going on when she's not here, which is a, that's the biggest key to success, I think. If I show her a new technique, I know that the next time I see her, she'll remember it and she will have practiced it and thought it through and figured it out. You know, she leaves here and I know that she's going to go home and do more work, which is, um, that's huge. That's huge for any athlete to have that. She's like a sponge. She really just absorbs everything that's there and will take it to heart and will focus on it. It's not often you run into somebody at that age who's just willing to put in the work like that and also just so open to pick up things. So even though she's at the age she's at, she kind of has more of like an adult mind when it comes to certain things of martial arts, which usually surprises a lot of people. This is what the martial arts community is like. You know, when, and just to see it in real time and see everybody help support and, and nourish a young seed that is gonna grow into a massive tree. And just to watch the progression, it, it's, it just reiterates that we were put on this planet to do what we're doing and it's exactly validated by doing the things like we did today. Helping get this message out there, sharing it with more people, bringing the awareness that this is a possibility for everyone. It's to pick you up and, you know, bring you back down to just reality and what's important and what's nice and good in the world again. Uh, but with her you know, martial arts thing. You got this person who's doing something that you also are passionate about and you really love. And it's just, you're living vicariously through her. And to every day to have that, it's just the most amazing feeling for me. And I'm so proud. When I first started, I saw a lot of like uh, Bruce Lee, you know, the UFC fights. And I was like, I was thinking, oh, I want to do that. I want to be the one in the ring that everyone's watching. I guess it's it's life. You say it's real life. We, we get to experience uh, lots of positivity. She has pros, and not just UFC. She has uh, boxing and other sports that will send random little thumbs up or likes or things on some videos. So you get all this positivity and all these good things. And then, of course, you get parents, uh, especially we in the early days. Uh, there was a few shows done with Ella trying to show her talents and her skills, and also trying to show how youth should get involved with martial arts. But they spun it and said, uh, you know, if should youth do this, it's violent, you know, you can get concussions as a child and there's problems. And um, we have to deal with, you know, the good and the bad. I'm sure it's like everybody who's in, in, in any kind of a public realm and not even large, not celebrity, dumb, but any kind of public we have any, any, with that Instagram account, there's a vulnerability. She's out there and we will get people saying, oh, I like that. Oh, that was a good hit. That's a good move. That's a great video. We love this. And then we always get the people who, you know, children shouldn't be doing that. And she's going to get hurt and it's wrong and things. I want to be a UFC fighter. I want to be a UFC champion. It just looks so badass and cool. And I know, like, I could be famous and everything. And, and I could get a lot of money. I could help a bunch of people. I could help my family. I could help anyone. One of my heroes is my dad because without him, I wouldn't even start martial arts because he's the one who introduced me to, like, Bruce Lee, you know, UFC fights. I wouldn't have gotten into it if it wasn't for him. You get to, in some sick psychological way, you almost get to relive parts of your life that, you know, you, I could have done better, I could have done more. I'm sure everybody carries something like that with them. And as I get older, you talk with people your own age and you realize it's like, yeah, everybody's carrying all these kinds of things. And yet with Ella, I get to, I get to watch and I get to be a fan and I get to observe. But at the same time, you're, oh yeah, look at her doing that. Look at, and you can picture it's like, yeah, I love doing that too. And I could, and you get to share in this journey of a passion and you get to watch somebody who's way better at it than you could ever be. And, uh, sit back in awe as a fan 
sit next to her as a friend and then hug her as a parent. It's like the perfect thing. Go for it. Don't be scared. Like, you know you can do this. Just train hard and work hard. You'll be able to do it for sure. Just keep pushing. Even when it gets hard, just keep pushing. All right. Uh, ten years from now, Ella, I'm proud of you. I know you're the champion by now for sure. Uh, maybe multiple time defending. Uh, I'm proud of you. And never give up. And I'll love you more than you'll ever know. You're the best. We have one more Ella, gift for Ella. Come on in here, Ella. <laughs> come right in the middle. Come on in here. Listen, today was so amazing and it was so awesome to watch you grow. And ever since we met you that day when you were training with Michelle Watterson, we knew there was something special in you. And, and I know that you've always wanted to go and train down at the Jackson Wink Academy. And what we would like to do is pay for your travel when the borders open to go down and train with the Jackson Wink Academy. It's on us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. You're going to go. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> we are going to make this happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're going to go. And we're going to be there with you because we want to see this happen. No. Yes. 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 Like action? Actually, Actually, we're gonna make it happen. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. Maybe it's more joyful. <laughs> <laughs> you guys deserve it. You're on the path. You're on the path. How are you gonna be and still without getting the proper training? <laughs> I know you're getting it up here, but you gotta go meet sit and talk to Michelle down there. I don't know how to thank you guys. You're welcome. You've got something really special and we want to help you. And it's just amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. She was serious. You could feel this. this she's not just dreaming here. Uh, she's serious. This was something that was lit. It was a moment. There was a light switch that was flicked on and it was never gonna be able to be flicked back off. And that was the exact moment that I knew that Ella had something for martial arts well beyond any hobby or just enjoyment for a sport. This was a passion for a sport and a love. And it's something that she was never ever gonna lose. <laughs>